Welcome back to the ETA series of Before You Buy or Sell a Business podcast. Today, I'm going to talk about seller carry notes. We're going to talk about the different types of seller carry notes that are typically used. And at the end, we'll talk about some of the new rules with SBA lending in regards to seller carry notes. Okay, so first, let's talk about essentially what is a seller carry note. So basically what it is, is in a normal transaction, a seller will hold back a portion of the transaction or of the purchase price, and the buyer will make payments to them over a set period of time. So they're basically loaning them the funds, but no cash is changing hands. So the different types of seller carry notes. So a traditional note would normally be anywhere from five to 10 years. You probably have an interest rate of five to 10% as well and that buyer would be making payments over that period of time to the seller. So some of the things you can add to it to make it a little bit easier on either the buyer or the seller would be to also add a balloon payment. So with that, you would basically have a set period of time. So let's use an example of 10 years that the loan would be based on. So the payments would be based on the interest rate and that period of time. However, there would be a period of time before that 10 years is up where anything that hasn't been paid off would become due. So normally you'd have maybe a 10 year term and a five year balloon with a 5% interest rate. So the buyer is gonna make monthly payments for the first five years. And then at the end of that five years, whatever is left that hasn't been paid off would be due at that point in time. So one of the main reasons for doing that is so that the buyer can have a smaller monthly payment, which increases their cash flow and it gives them more money to work with during that first five years of operating the business, which most likely is the, the hardest time with the business and when they need cash flow the most as the business is growing or they're reinvesting in the business. So it gives them the opportunity to have more cash available and then likely at the end of that five years, they're ready to make the payment for the remaining amount. So the next one we would talk about would be performance-based seller notes. So it would still be set up like a traditional seller carry note where a portion of the purchase price is held back and the buyer would make normal monthly payments over the life of the loan. However, it would be performance-based. So you could build in language that would offset the note where part of the note could be forgivable. So if they didn't hit a certain performance metrics, then a portion of that loan on the seller carry note could be forgiven. So a good example would be if a buyer is worried about a customer concentration, if that customer actually left and no longer was a customer of the of the business after the buyer takes over, then a portion of that note could be forgiven and wouldn't be due anymore to the seller. So it's a good way to mitigate some risk. Could also go the other way where maybe the revenue started to be reduced then the note could actually be put off and there could be no payments due for a certain period of time. So there's many different things you can do on a performance-based note. I would definitely suggest using an attorney to write that note to make sure that everything complies with not only any SBA guidelines, but also just make sure to cover you and that the language is very clear. The next one that we'll talk about, and it's actually definitely fits in if you're doing an SBA loan and it's some of the new rules. So the note is called a standby note. So it's usually referencing a certain period of the note. And historically with a standby note, it basically meant that during the standby period, there's no payments due on that note. So most buyers like it because it gives you a certain period of time where you're not having to make any payments. So it gives them more cash flow during that period. Some sellers like it as well because it gives them the ability to withhold some of those those funds since they just got a large payout from selling the business and they're pushing some of that tax liability down the road. Now, as it pertains to SBA lending, A standby period historically meant for the entire life of the SBA loan. So normally you'd have it for a full 10 years. There was no payments that were being due on the loan. Well, a few months ago, they changed it and the SBA now references a standby period or a standby note as only being the first 24 months of the loan. So in that first 24 months, no payments are due on the loan. 
however interest can accrue. The other caveat that they threw in was that there could be no balloon payment on that note. So if the seller is willing to do a standby note of just two years with no payments being due, where interest can still accrue, but there's no balloon payment as well, then we can actually count that as part of the down payment that is required by SBA to purchase the business. So those are many of the different types of notes that you can use on a transaction for seller carry notes. You can even put some of them together. You can do a multiple of notes on one transaction. And remember, it's always great to have an attorney that is very seasoned write the note to make sure everybody's protected. Don't forget to like and subscribe and drop in the comments how you've used a seller carry note on your transaction.